Buenos días. La Comisión Estatal para la Planeación de la Educación Superior les da la más cordial bienvenida a la conferencia magistral que nos concede el excelentísimo señor embajador de la República de Corea en los Estados Unidos Mexicanos, Su Jong-in, titulada La Transformación de la República de Corea hacia la Cuarta Revolución Industrial, la cual enriquece el programa del Segundo Foro Internacional de la Pertinencia de la Educación Superior de la COEPES. Conforman el comité de recepción a nuestro invitado de honor, el doctor Luis Felipe Guerrero Agripino, presidente de la COEPES y rector general de la Universidad de Guanajuato. Maestro Adelmo Reyes Pablo, subsecretario de Educación Media Superior y Superior del Estado de Guanajuato y secretario ejecutivo de la COEPES, en representación del maestro Jorge Enrique Hernández Mesa, secretario de Educación del Estado de Guanajuato. Maestra María Esther Santos de Anda, tesorera de la COEPES y rectora de la Universidad de Estudios Profesionales de Ciencias y Artes. Maestro Paolo Mario Moreto Piovenzán, representante del sector social ante la COEPES, coordinador de trabajo de desarrollo ambiental y de la red de educación para el desarrollo sostenible de la COEPES. Maestro David Cabrera Ruiz, coordinador del equipo de trabajo de estudio y pertinencia de la COEPES y titular de la Unidad de Apoyo al Desarrollo Educativo de la Universidad de Guanajuato. Asimismo, damos la bienvenida a representantes de las instituciones de educación superior que son parte de esta comisión, así como a panelistas y participantes en este foro. Bienvenidas, bienvenidos. A continuación, el doctor Luis Felipe Guerrero Agripino, presidente de la COEPES y rector general de la Universidad de Guanajuato, tendrá a bien pronunciar un mensaje de bienvenida. Adelante. Muchas gracias. Buenos días. Le doy una muy cordial bienvenida al excelentísimo señor Su Yong Hin, embajador de la hermana República de Corea. Bienvenido, señor embajador. Hablo en nombre de una eh, red interinstitucional de la educación superior en el estado de Guanajuato, la COEPES. Hablo en nombre de 64 integrantes que conformamos este organismo. Para nosotros esta eh, participación suya tiene un enorme significado. Tiene un enorme significado porque por un lado representa el seguimiento de este trabajo colaborativo de la COEPES. Y en el marco de este trabajo colaborativo nos queda muy claro que en el ámbito educativo siempre tenemos que estar atentos a la escucha de otras voces, de otras expresiones, de otras vivencias y de otras experiencias. Y qué mejor oportunidad que conocer su experiencia en el ámbito del desarrollo educativo, de la ciencia, la innovación, la vinculación en su país. También, por otro lado, eh, lo que significa Corea en el ámbito de la educación superior, indudablemente constituye un paradigma a nivel global. Cómo un país pone en eh, primer término la, el talento humano para el desarrollo de una nación y cómo visualizando a la educación al desarrollo científico y a la innovación, se pueden superar diversas adversidades en un país o incluso ponerlo en la vanguardia en diferentes expresiones científicas y de innovación. También, por otro lado, el hecho de que usted vaya a participar con nosotros el día de hoy no deja... Eh, no dejamos de, de lado una circunstancia particular, que estamos justo en el marco de los 60 años de la colaboración de su país con México. Y otra circunstancia, que precisamente en este año se cumplen 50 años de la edición del Festival Internacional Cervantino, y que en el marco de estos 50 años, en esta edición especial, el país invitado es Corea. Bajo esas coincidencias afortunadas, el día de hoy le damos la bienvenida. Cierro con la expresión que indudablemente, con una expresión que indudablemente debe guiar el 
sentido de la educación y de lo que representa la humanidad en su conjunto para la obtención de fines comunes. Una expresión que usted ha dicho y que ha antepuesto para el trabajo, para la visión compartida. Juntos. Aunado a juntos, quizás podríamos agregarle el nosotros, el nosotras, para que nos permita situarnos en un plano de colaboración, de mirada común, en un mundo que compartimos. Somos una humanidad con diversas visiones, con distintas circunstancias y precisamente en la educación encontramos nosotros y juntos la posibilidad de crear grandes puentes de hermandad. Este es un ejemplo de ello. Bienvenido, señor embajador. Agradecemos las palabras del doctor Guerrero Agripino, presidente de esta comisión y rector general de la Universidad de Guanajuato. A continuación, el maestro David Cabrera Ruiz, coordinador del equipo de trabajo de estudio y pertinencia de la COEPES, tendrá a bien brindar la reseña curricular del excelentísimo señor Su jong in señor embajador de la República de Corea. Su jong in eh, nace el primero de marzo de 1962. Obtiene la licenciatura en Letras y Literatura Alemana por la Universidad de Hankook de Estudios Internacionales de Seúl, Corea, en febrero de 1986. Obtiene el máster en Relaciones Internacionales en la Universidad George Washington en Washington, D.C., en Estados Unidos, en mayo de 1992. En su carrera profesional, en abril de 1988, aprueba el examen de servicio diplomático superior. En junio de 1988, ingresa al Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores, MOFA, en junio de 1994, eh, asume como segundo secretario en la Embajada de la República de Corea en la República Italiana. En diciembre de 1996, eh, asume como primer secretario en la Embajada de la República de Corea en la República de Indonesia. En enero de 2002, eh, es primer secretario en la Embajada de la República de Corea en la Mancomunidad de Australia. En diciembre de 2003, él es director en la División de Relaciones con la Prensa, Oficina del Portavoz, Ministerio de Asuntos Exteriores, y Comercio MOFAT. En enero de 2005 es director en la División del Sudeste Asiático en la Oficina de Asuntos de Asia y el Pacífico MOFAT. En enero de 2007 es consejero en la Embajada de la República de Corea en Japón. En diciembre de 2009 asume como ministro consejero en la Embajada de la República de Corea en Reino de Tailandia. En febrero de 2011 es director general adjunto en la Oficina de Asuntos del Sur de Asia y el Pacífico MOFAT. En abril de 2013 es director general para asuntos de Asia del Sur y el Pacífico MOFA. En septiembre de 2017 asume como viceministro de planeación y coordinación MOFA. Y en diciembre de 2018 es representante del gobierno y director ejecutivo de la Oficina de Asuntos Preparativos para la reunión de la cumbre conmemorativa ASEAN República de Corea 2019. Ha recibido el reconocimiento orden al mérito de servicio en diciembre de 2005. Es casado con dos hijos, honrados y agradecidos con su presencia. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for the kind uh, introduction. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Luis uh, Felipe Guerrero, President of the State Commission for the Planning of the Higher Education in Guanajuato Opus, and the General Dean of the University of the Guanajuato, um, Mr. Jorge, Jorge Herdenanz, Guanajuato University of the uh, Education, for the inviting me to this uh, second international forum on the relevance of the higher education. I also want to thank all uh, students from all the different universities who are here uh, with us today. It is great pleasure to be with you, even if it is uh, remotely. The topic I was asked to present today is public policy on economics, technology, and the education for the national transformation. So I think this is a great opportunity to share with you the footsteps 
of the national transformation that Korea has followed over the last 70 years. With this presentation, I would like to introduce Korea's public policy for the national development with a focus on education. In our country and our preparations for the fourth industrial revolution. I have divided this presentation into four parts. First, I will provide you with the Korean's current economic status at the world stage. Second, I will explain Korea's process for the national transformation since the end of the Korean War in 1950. Third, I will talk about the main drive of the economic transformations, which also include more on the education in Korea. Finally, I will do an overview of Korea's public policy as it prepares for the fourth industrial revolutions. So let's begin. Just show slide uh, two and three. First of all, I would like to present to you a series of indexes which shows Korea's current economic status. According to the latest World Economic Outlook released by the IMF, Korea ranked 10th worldwide in 2020 in terms of GDP, standing at 1.6 trillion US dollars. Furthermore, Korea became the seventh country among the countries with a population of 50 million to attain a GNI, a gross national income per capita of more than $30,000. Next. According to the WTO, Korea was the seventh largest export worldwide in 2000. 20, and the ninth largest import. Korea topped the uh, 2021 Bloomberg Innovation Index on Indicate that involve a comprehensive analysis of the 60 countries using a series of metrics such as patent activity, R&D intensity, value-added manufacturing, research concentration, and high-tech density. Korea has topped the index for the seventh over the last nine years of the publication, including 2021. Earning the recognition as one of the world's most innovative economies along, the, along with the Singapore, Switzerland, and the Germany. Korea is the first uh, country uh, in the world to have made the transition from a recipient of the ODA, or Official Development Assistance, to a donor country. As a former aid recipient, Korea takes its ODA responsibility very seriously. Since 2010, Korea's average annual growth rate of ODA grant have stood at 11.9%, the highest among the OECD DAC members. In 2020, Korea ranked 16th among the DAC members with the on ODA volumes over 2.25 billion US dollars. The country has steadily increased its ODA volume and remains dedicated to the increasing. It further to meet UN target for the ODA. Korea also actively participate in the international cooperation to address global challenges, such as 
climate change and UN peacekeeping operations. As we just saw, Korea successfully rebuilt the, its economy following the uh, devastation of the 36 year Japanese colonial rule and the ashes of the Korean War in 1950-53 to emerge as the world number 10 largest economy in 2020. From 1960 to the 2020, Korea's GDP lived more than 410 fold times from 4 billion US dollars to 1.6 trillion dollars. And GDP per capita rose more than 209 times from the $150 to the $31,000. Leading economists around the world who have witnessed Korea's rapid economic development such as Harvard University Professor Vogel often referred to Korea as a little dragon of Asia and its economic growth as the quote and unquote miracle under the Han River or simply the simply miracle. The Korean government began to implement state-led five-year economic development plan which placed Korean economy on a track for rapid growth. After the Korea achieved full democracy in 1987, economic growth has remained steady since the 1950s due to the political stability. Now, let us look into Korea's development plan in more details. In the 1950s and the 60s, Korea pursued an export-oriented industrialization policy, mainly focused on the light industries. Shortly after the end of the Korean War, our government concentrated its effort on locally producing flour, sugar, cement, and other essential materials that the country previously had to import based on the, the import substitution industrialization policy that was a part of the five-year industrial development plan. In the 60s, the government accelerated its export-oriented industrialization drive under the slogan, Exports are Korea's only way for survival. The textile industry served as the main driving force behind Korea's economic growth at that time. Korea broke the $100 million mark in export in 1964 and posted an average annual growth rate of the 41% in export throughout the 1960s and an average annual economic growth rate of 8.7% for almost a decade from 1962 to 1971. The 1970s to the 80s was the period of lifting forward with our heavy chemical industry. In the 1970s, the government declared, declared a transition toward a heavy chemical industry with the goal of upgrading the nation's industrial structure. Korea managed to export $10 billion worth of goods in 1977. The economic and industrial uh, development achieved through the policy 
private, uh, public private sector on uh, partnership has received recognition in global economic history as a successful example of the so-called development developmental state. In 1980, the government shifted its economic paradigm from state red to the private sector red growth and implemented the policy measures to stabilize consumer prices. The hosting of the 10th Asian Games Seoul in 1986 and the Seoul Summer Olympic in 1988 provided an opportunity to pro promote Korea around the world and to achieve an average annual growth of over 12%. In 1990s was the era of the innovating the heavy chemical industry and shifting to high tech industry. The government and the business focuses on the technological innovation, the expansion of production capacity and the development of proprietary technologies in key industries that has been dependent on advanced countries for technology. As a result, there was a significant outcome, for example, POSCO developed and commercialized advanced steel making technology and the Korean shipyard ranked first in the world in terms of ship orders. Having achieved continuously, continuous quality innovation. Korean automakers such as Hyundai Motor Company and Kia Motors saw continuous sales growth in advanced markets such as the US and Europe. It is also notable that Korea's economic center shifted to high-tech industry such as semiconductors and computers, displays and communications and the mobile phones. After the year 2000, we have shifted the focus to service technology and capital intensive sectors. In the 2000, 2000s, Korea witnessed a rise in productivity, a decrease in the manufacturing jobs, and growth in the service industry and the related jobs. At the, at, at the time, the Korean the government made a major shift in economic policy to prioritize R&D, research and development in key high-tech industries. As the core of Korea's economic development were the local businesses relentlessly deploying technological innovation strategies and pouring their resources into the field. This was the driving force behind the emergence of the Korean companies as a global leaders in automobile, shipbuilding, high-speed trains, and infrastructures, and their fame, reputation for the best, world best technology in electronics and the semiconductors industries. Korea's economic development was possibly thanks to the cooperation among the different stakeholders, including Korean government and the Korean people and the private sector. I would like to point out five driving forces that have driven Korea's economic development. I will quickly provide an overview of the four main driving forces. Uh, before I finally, I will uh, uh, finally, uh, I will, uh, I would like to comment on the Korean education more closely. First driving force is seamless execution of the state-led economic development plans. Korea's national economic development plan are hailed as a successful policies. The seven five-year economic development plan 
carried out from 1962 to 1997, aimed to seamlessly promote economic development. During the period, the country's GNI, GNI per capita jumped 114 times from a mere 87 US dollars to the 10,000 US dollars. Trade volume score rises as much as 560 times from less than $500 million to the $280 billion in value over just 36 years. Starting in 1982, the economic development plan was reoriented with the addition of the social development goal and the initiative, initiative to address income inequality. Second driving force is the success of the present engaging community development uh, uh, movement, uh, so-called Semaul Undong. Semaul Undong is a rural community development movement that began in early 1970s. It was stated as the movement that was launched with the aim of improving the basic living conditions and environment of the rural villages, while also increasing community increase to vitalize the rural economy. Semal Lundong is often criticized as a flagship project pursued by the authoritarian government over the, the, the time. But it really served its purpose as a state-led drive to engage community members in a development process. Today, the movement serves as a core model for the Korea's ODA project. The third driving process is export control, export, uh, export conglomerate uh, oriented policy and the businesses uh, relentlessly uh, taking on challenges. The government implemented an export-oriented industry policy that granted generous incentives and the preference to exporters. It also facilitated cooperative loan bearing with a low, low below market interest rate and cut carbon corporate taxes to uh, nurture the heavy chemical industries. Emboldened by the sport, Korean companies made the uh, indulged into the global market and relentlessly pursued technological development. As a result, many Korean companies have emerged as global leaders in shipping, shipbuilding, automobiles, electronics, semiconductor and steel making, etc. Fourth driving process is strong work ethics. The people of Korea served as the most critical engine behind the country's economic development. With their hard work, diligence, dedication, and a strong sense of community. After the country's accession, to the group of the developed economies. Korean peoples are working hard to sharpen the nation's global competitiveness in the 2020s. They also maintain a strong work ethics. Now, I would like to explain the people's driving force behind the Korean economic development, education. I would like to talk about this in more details, especially since this is a seminar on higher education today. In the process of the transforming Korea's economy and society, four features characteristics of a Korean education are worth noting. First, in terms of the supply side of the education, Korean education system has evolved through the egalitarianism. Since the modern 
school system was first introduced in Korea about a century ago. From the beginning of the expansion process, the government has been keen to the ensure equal opportunity for all, regardless of gender, religion, geographic location, or socioeconomic status. Secondly, here is the demand side of the education. Korean society has traditionally placed high value on education. The demand for more and the better education has remained strong and this has been one of the major reasons for the severe competition for the college admissions. There has been extensive parental sacrifices for their children's education and their involvement in their contribution to schools. Thirdly, I would like to point out that the timing and the sequencing of policy choices were also important in Korean education policy. The policy emphasis shifted from the primary education in the 1960s at the early stage to secondary in 1970s and then to the tertiary in the 1980s. Vocation education was not as emphasized as a general education until the skill level of the workforce increased. Finally, I would like to highlight that Korean education policies close relations with its development policies. In the early stage of the economic development plan in 1960s, the primary goal of the educational plan was to expand the basic educational opportunity for the eligible children, all eligible children. During the third five-year plan from the 1972 to 1976, which stressed the development of the heavy industries, the vocal, vocational and te technical education at the upper secondary level was emphasized through the 1970s. After the fifth economic development plan from the 1982 to 86, Korea experienced democratization and the increase of the civil sector capacity. This made a shift of the focus from a mere expansion of the education and the quantitative emphasis on the manpower supply to better quality, relevance, and the excellences over the education. Former US President Barack Obama praised the Korean passions for the education when he visited Korea. The nation's quality education system and its contribution to economic development on several occasions throughout his presence. In this graph, you will notice that Korea's total expenditure on educational institutions as a percentage of GDP in 2018 is above the OECD average. The total public spending on primary and tertiary education as a percentage of the total government expenditure average is 11% across the OECD countries. According to this slide, Mexico is uh, number seven is, uh, and Korea is number eight. Now, let's see the performance of the education of Korea. According to OECD indicators of 2019, Korea ranked high in education attainment in, in uh, tw uh, 25 and 34 years old. In, co in Korea, about 70 percent of the population in this age group have a bachelor's degree or equivalent well above the OECD average of 45%. Uh, in 2018, in PISA, Program for the International Student Assessment Testing, 
15 years old in Korea scored 514 to the 519 point in reading, mathematics, and science, which is significantly higher than the OECD averages. The slide show the human capital index. The human capital index of the World Bank is a measure used to calculate the total amount of human capital based on the health and the education data. And it's a common use as an index to estimate the productivity of the next generation of workers. In this index, Korea ranked the second in the world after Singapore in 2018 and the fourth in 2020. In conclusion, Korea continued to rank high in education attainment and in, in the human capital index of the World Bank. We can see that this quality of human capital is a major source of the country's strengths. We have looked through Korea's past public policy for the transformation of its economy and its society. For this part, I will focus I will explain Korea's policy for the preparations toward the post-industrial revolutions. Korea currently focuses on the transforming its economic structures toward the next generation emerging technologies. The Korean companies' strengths in the global market rise in the, their technological uh, prowess in the semiconductors and the batteries and as well as ICT. According to the OECD's main science and technological indication, indicators, Korea ranked second in the world after Israel in gross domestic expenditure on GDP. That is 4.6% uh, as you can see as a share of the GDP. On the other hand, Mexico is 0.46%. Uh, uh, that is uh, uh, the second from the bottom, as you can see on the right side. In addition, Korea was ranked fifth globally in total R&D spending in 2019, as the government and the business investor more than 100 billion US dollars in R&D. With such a high level of R&D spending, Korean companies are able to maintain their positions in the face of the fierce competition from counterparts in both advanced economy and the countries like China that are investing heavily in the R&D. Amid the rapid changes in the global economy and the technological changes brought forth by the first industrial revolutions, the Korean government uh, has envisioned a great transformation for the country's future and is sharing the mid to long term goals with the public. The Korean New Deal aims to transform the nation's industrial structure and to strike a balance between growth and the distributions. The policy com uh, comprised the three pillars of the digital New Deal, the Green New Deal, and the Human New Deal, which are the destined to facilitate a transition toward a green digital economy and alleviate unemployment and the income equality caused by the economic restructuring. The policy outline on approach utilizing public-private cooperation to create new industries through the convergence of the smart technologies and to facilitate transition toward a hyper 
intelligence and the hyper-connected society. To achieve the digital new level deal, a massive amount of data needed to be collected through the network and fed to AI, artificial intelligence, leading to the development of various intelligent solutions. This requires core technology in data, network, and AI, and an ecosystem that can implement and manage them. Data is a vital that called the, it is called crude oil of the digital economy. The Korean government has been making strides in data standardizations and the data quality improvement to support wide data utilization so that public data in areas closely related to the people's lives will be more accessible and the efficient data utilization will be possible. Thanks to Korean government policy effort, there has been a rapid increase in the amount of freely accessible public data, the size of data workplace, as well as the size of the private sector data industry. The data market size of the data industry in 2022 is 16, 16 billion US dollars, which increased 14.3% than previous years. The number of the workers in the industry in 2019 was 89,000, uh, which increased 7.8% than previous years and continuously growing. Korea launched the world first commerce, commercial 5G services in April 2019 and so has been increasing the number of 5G-based stations. As of April 2021, the number of 5G subscribers reached over the 15 million, and the 5G data traffic surpassed that of the 5G. The number of Internet of Things, IoT, service subscriptions representing the current hyper-connected connect uh, connectedness of the society increased by 21% on year to 26 uh, billion. The AI ecosystem in Korea is growing rapidly. Sales in the AI sector in the 2029 totaled 244 million US dollars. 11.5% increase from the previous year. The uh, cumulated number of the AI speakers sold by the March 2020 was 8.61 million in 2020, 45.7% increase from March to 2019, one year ago. Now, I would like to provide a more detailed explanation of one Korean government policy, the so-called uh, Data Dam uh, Project. Data Dam Project is one of the cornerstones of the Korean Digital New Deal to help the Korea's digital economy adapt to the post-COVID era. We know that the function of the water uh, storage dams is to collect, store water, and uh, distribute it to the surrounding land for the activities such as farming. Just like the water dam, the data dam collect information from public and private sectors to increase useful data and release the data across all industries. The main purpose of the data dam project is to collect, standardize, process, utilize the data in order to make it usable for the AI learning. In 2022, the Mr. Mr. Ministry of Science and Information and Technology conducted research and analysis of data demand for the AI learning across the public and private sectors. Based on the result, 
the ministry set, set the eight target areas and engaged experts from business, academic, and the research areas in planning and establishing a data platform for AI learning. 674 organizations participated. The ministry also adopted cloud sourcing tactics so that 40,000 citizens could participate in the collecting and processing data for AI learning, so-called data reveling. The Korean government at least 191 types of data, uh, 530 million data items by December 2021. We think that this data set is globally competitive. For example, the famous image data network, ImageNet, provide 1.43 million images. Data then provide 140 million images. The uses performance of the data then is increased 17.5 times between 2019 and 2021 from 20,000 and 370,000. Korea has tirelessly responded to the socioeconomic changes, both internally and externally, and transformed into the leading innovate in various fields, including education. Korea has experienced colonization, division, war, and the devastation, economic development, democratization, and the two economic crises in the last uh, uh, 10, year, 100 years. I strongly believe that this experience and the challenges and the, our response have given us energy and dynamism. Faced with today's rapidly changing economic landscapes, Korea will endeavor to find the best possible answer and act on that. In conclusion, I, as your ambassador to Mexico, will do my best to advance together between Korea and Mexico, not only in the area of the education, but also on, in all areas. Especially, this is, this is a very, important uh, milestones years for both countries. As uh, 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 Dean Pelipe said at his opening ceremony, on January 26th, the day before, we celebrated 60th anniversary of the, our diplomatic relations. On the occasion, both present exchanges of congratulatory letters uh, uh, as well. During this year, our embassy will have many uh, events to celebrate the 60th uh, uh, anniversaries, including a coast country of Cervantino festivals in October. Here in Kanauhatu, uh, I hope all of you uh, uh, to be there uh, to enjoy Korean culture. Also, uh, on a final note, uh, I would like all of you to uh, download, uh, download just a special, uh, special book on the, the Korea and Mexico relations to celebrate the 60th anniversary and it was produced very recently. And then you, uh, all contents, information are available just at the, our uh, uh, at the embassy's homepage. Please uh, enjoy reading, reading just uh, uh, all very valuable just uh, content. Thank you very much for your listening. Agradecemos la generosa distinción que hoy nos ha concedido el excelentísimo señor Su jong in embajador de la República de Corea, y que, al mismo tiempo, enriquece la celebración de la hermandad entre Corea y México en este significativo aniversario.